said, I'll try to speak as loud as possible. Let me know if you don't listen what I, parts of what I say. Uh, first of all, thank you, Leticia and Thomas Force for the invitation to give this lecture today. My name is Paulo Cesar, and I will be talking about the Brazilian data market as of December 2014. Here is the outline of the presentation. First, I will introduce myself and the subject of the Brazilian dental market. Then, I will show the profile of the Brazilian dentist. Then, the profile of the consumer market. Uh, I will show you the size of the Brazilian market, the growth trends, uh, who are the main players in the Brazilian dental market, and in the end, I'll make my remarks. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself, as I said, my name is Paul Cesar. I uh, am a dentist and I went to undergrad school for zirconia crowns. Uh, we do this type of experiments to predict the lifetime of these materials in the clinic. And because of this type of research, uh, many dental companies, many Brazilian dental companies, they come to us uh, in order to develop projects together. Whenever they have a new material, they come to the lab, they want, they want us to test the material in order to predict their lifetime before it gets to the clinic. And due to, due to this interaction with the dental companies, I ended up gathering a lot of knowledge about the Brazilian dental markets. And that's why uh, last year I started uh, working as a certified consultant for the Swiss Business Hub. And that's why I was invited today to talk with you about the Brazilian dental market. As an introduction, I would like just to highlight, I know that most of you already know Brazil very well, uh, one of the most important features of this large, of this country with a large territory are the regional differences. And so through, uh, along the lecture, I will show you uh, uh, many times the regional differences that affect the mental markets. Like, for example, we, we know that in the north of Brazil, uh, we have a lower uh, population density, and people have lower income compared to the south and southeast, where you have a much higher population density difference. In the north of Brazil, we have the ratio differences regarding the population per dentist ratio. But uh, uh, after we, we did a lot of interviews with dental Brazilian companies, we noticed that the real number of active dentists in Brazil is much lower than the one by the council. This is because many dentists retire, others change professions for, so for many reasons they are not working anymore as dentists. So uh, a more realistic number of Brazilian dentists, the active dentists, is 160,000 dentists in Brazil. 66% uh, of these dentists are located in the states of São Paulo, Minas Gerais, Rio de Janeiro, Rio Grande do Sul, and Paraná. The smallest number of dentists is two uh, in the state of Sao Paulo. You can, uh, I would like to recommend that you go online and play with the school. It's a very interesting two minutes. It was just released in December 2014. Well, let's now move to the profile of the consumer market. Uh, the consumer market is more or less the patients that will be treated by the dentists. Okay, so it's general information about the Brazilian consumer market. 80% uh, of the population in Brazil right now live in uh, urban districts, so uh, we have a pretty urban population. The population is relatively young, it's, it's still relatively young. Uh, only 8% is aged 65 years uh, or more. However, you have to be aware that this uh, group of people with 65 uh, years of age or, or more, they are growing at three times the rate of the overall population. So that is, Brazil is a quarter of the population uh, earns from uh, $400 up to $600 per month, and they belong to class D. And the rest, 16%, belongs to class E, and these are the people earning, earning up to $600. Uh, in parallel to this information, I would like to show how most of the Brazilian companies find the Brazilian dentists according to the socio-economic 
criteria. Uh, they divide the, the, the population of dentists in three groups, A, B, and C. The dentists from uh, group A are those treating patients from classes A and B. They represent 14% of the dentist population. Dentists from class, what we call group B, they treat the patients from class C. And they represent the number of patients treated every in one year. So the national average is almost 900 patients per year. 26% of the dentists responded that they treat up to 400 patients a year. 29% treat from 400 to 800 patients a year. And 28% treat more than 800 patients a year. Uh, in this uh, graph, we are showing the dentist. This data is related to the question as to whether the number of patients had increased, decreased, or remained stable. So 46%, almost half of the dentists uh, responded that the number of patients from 2013 to 2014 increased. 41% responded that the number remained stable, and 12% responded that the number increased. This is one of the most, most important information for you from the uh, dental companies. Uh, the amount spent, this is the amount spent by uh, with dental materials per month. Uh, so 27% of the clinics responded that they spent up to 700 reais per month. 31% responded that they spent from 700 to 1500. And 17% responded that they spent more than 1500 reais per month. 25% of respond. Okay, let's move to the size of the dental, Brazilian dental market. Here we have the size of the market in 2004. Uh, for a conference that we are now World of the Economic Forum. And uh, he, I don't know if you heard, he took a lot, a lot of measures in the beginning of January here in Brazil. And his prediction is that we're going to have a negative result on the short term, but everything's going to be all right in the next year. So that's going to be what's written in this report. You can take a look at that later. Well, the good news is that uh, what I just showed you is the G, Brazilian GDP. But uh, now we're going to take a look specifically on, on the growth trend of the bank market. It's a much better prediction. Okay? Uh, here we're going to see uh, the size of the market in millions of dollars. First, I'm going to show you the, the orange line is capital equipment. This is data chairs and x-rays. Then I'm going to show instruments and supplies. Uh, these are uh, expandables, uh, data materials in general. And the blue line is the total, it's the sum of the two first. Okay. So uh, for capital equipment, we have a prediction of growth from 75 to 2013, 74 uh, last year, and it should grow up to 120 in 2018, according to S. Regarding instruments and supply, we have, we have a much steeper increase. Uh, but this market is expected to almost double up to 2018. And also, the sum of both growth, of both, both uh, lines, both markets, is expected meant is uh, the Kaukei event. The second one is Speedgrab, the third one is Tanaka. The three of them, they sell to the whole Brazil territory. Now, if you look at the other categories, that we divide them in two groups. The first group comprises resin composites, data, adhesives, elastomers, and cements. And these are the groups that are leaded. Uh, the market is leaded by foreign companies uh, that, are, that are either from the US, Germany, or Switzerland. Regarding bleaching and implants, these uh, groups are leaded by uh, Brazilian companies and especially uh, implants, only Brazilian companies in this market here in Brazil, if we don't consider recent futures that were in this market. So let's take a look at the three first leaders of each of the groups. For resin composites, the, the, the 
left wide. From adhesives, we have the first one is 3M, followed by dense fly and content. For elastomers, the first one is content, I don't know what you're finding. The second one is Zermak, and the third one is 3M. For cements, the leader in Brazil is SS White, followed by 3M and Dance Line. Which materials we have, uh, FGM is a Brazilian company, uh, and the second one is Ultra Dent, and the third one is DFL. And the only one that has only Brazilians in the first three is uh, Neo, Neo Dente, I'll speak in the same Portuguese, Neo Dente, Sim, and Conexão, even though we know that Neo Dente was just one question on this one. Well, as, a, as my concluding remarks, I'd like to show you uh, the main opportunities and the main challenges of the Brazilian market. The main opportunities are the size of the Brazilian market, as I told you, it's, it's a pretty good size. It's a size of half a billion dollars in 2014, so it is considered a good size. And the growth perspective is also good. It's expect, it is expected to grow to double in the next five years. Uh, the main growing areas are pressure materials, cements, temporary materials, curing lines and implants. And the challenges of the Brazilian market are, as I gave, as the example I gave you, we have a market uh, that is extremely price sensitive. The consumer market in general is very price sensitive. And then we have, I didn't mention during the lecture, but I would like to say during the market, very important regulatory issues with uh, the agency called the visa. So you should expect you your letter because probably you have been waiting for a long time for registration. It takes at least two years you can you guys can tell me. And, and it's a lot of bureaucracy, sometimes small changes in a form and make things you wait a long time. So it's a general complaint that uh, it takes too long, it's too bureaucratic. And uh, we also have the drawback of having high importation taxes. And one of the measures that Dr. Levy, our Ministry of the Economy, just announced two weeks ago is that he is increasing a bit more the importation taxes. And I know it's, it's, it's a sad news for companies to at least to uh, import at least part of the countries that they sell. Just as a final note, I would like to say that uh, since last year I have been working as an expert consultant for the Swiss Business Hub with Dr. Thomas and Leticia. And uh, so you can you, you find the, the, the consultants for the Swiss Business Hub, you can go online in this website where you have the expert directory. And my company is called Clinical Sense of Conclusion and it's registered as a certified consultant. And I'd like to end with a nice picture from Quilla Prox <laughs> that I think that represents very well what we're trying to do here, and that is the interaction between Brazil and Switzerland. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. You have my email here. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope, I hope the, the information helped you in some way. Thank you very much. I hope it gave you a little insight. It's not an easy life here. It's a challenging market, but it's a market full of opportunities. And uh, with all the people you find here in the Swiss Pavilion, the Swiss Chamber of Commerce, us, the Swiss Economic Enterprise, the uh, General Council, all the doctors and experts uh, we have gathered for this uh, CEOs in 2015, uh, we hope you have uh, got a good insight and uh, leave to Switzerland or if you live here. So I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, thank you once again and make use of us and him.